Folks, I'd like to talk to you today about camera up tilt and specifically the way in which camera up tilt affects your ability to manage the speed of the copter and the altitude of the copter. And in order to do that, I've enlisted the help of a friend of mine to build this tool right here. We're using a really cool website called desmos.com. And it's kind of like Mathematica light in your web browser. So if that concept perks up your ears and your brain, go check it out. See for yourself. It's a really cool website. Very easy to work with. If you have a Mathematica background, it's super easy to work with. Uh, but it's a really quick way to mock up something like this and very worth your attention. What I've got here is I've got two sliders. And these sliders are going to represent the throttle value for an imaginary copter, and this, this one. And notice that I raise the slot and lower the slider. This little, this little point goes up and down. And this one is going to represent the pitch angle of the copter. And so as I change the pitch angle, the copter goes from zero degrees of pitch, that's a, a flat hover, to, well, eventually 90 degrees of pitch, which would be completely perpendicular to the ground. So I want you to imagine that there's a quadcopter right here, and it's perpendicular to this line, and this line is the thrust of the quadcopter coming out the bottom, okay? So let's imagine then that the copter is hovering, and let's imagine that it hovers at a throttle point of, let's say, 30%. This is a relatively powerful copter, and you'll see why a little later that it makes our example work better. So it's a powerful copter, it's hovering at 30%, so we have a vertical magnitude of thrust of 30, and of course since we've, we're pointing straight down, we have no horizontal magnitude, the copter is just hovering. And then if we were to pitch forward to, let's say we pitch forward to 25 degrees. So let's imagine that we have a camera up tilt of 25 degrees, that means we're going to naturally place the horizon at the, at the neutral point in the camera at an angle of about 25 degrees. So when we pitch forward, some of the vertical thrust gets diverted horizontally, and therefore our vertical component is no longer big enough to keep us from losing altitude. We need 30 units, we only have 20 units, and so we're going to need to raise the throttle. And let's raise the throttle until we get 30 units of vertical magnitude. Okay, fine. Now the copter is no longer losing altitude, it's maintaining altitude, and it has a horizontal component of about 14. Okay, so we're, let's imagine that the horizontal component is our speed. We're going 14 units of thrust fast. Okay, what happens when we pitch forward another 10 degrees? We're going to go from 25 to 35. So let's say we want to go a little bit faster. When we do that, of course, we lose the vertical component of thrust and we get more horizontal thrust. And in order to maintain altitude, again, we need to raise the throttle until we get back to 30 units of vertical magnitude, okay? So now, once again, we're no longer gaining nor losing altitude, and we've gone from 14 to 21 units of horizontal magnitude, so now the copter is going faster. And this explains why if you pitch forward more, you raise the throttle to maintain your altitude, and sure enough, you go faster. You pitch forward, you go faster, right? Hardly revolutionary. Let's look at how this situation changes, though, at higher amounts of uptilt. So now let's imagine we've entered Matty Stunt's land and we're at 55 degrees of up tilt, okay? Again, I'm going to raise the throttle until I get 30 units of vertical magnitude so that I am neither gaining nor losing altitude. Okay, so now I need a throttle position of 74% in order to just maintain my altitude and my horizontal component, my speed, is now 43. So right here we can see very sort of intuitively why as you add more up tilt and especially as you get past somewhere around 45 degrees you start to need way more throttle in order to maintain your altitude and your copter starts going way faster the horizontal component after you get past 45 degrees the horizontal component is actually bigger than the vertical component and as you add throttle to maintain your altitude you push yourself to go much much faster if we take this angle down to 45 degrees, that's going to be the point where the vertical and the horizontal components are the same. So every time you adjust your altitude, you make yourself go just as much faster as you did make yourself go higher. When you're below 45 degrees, you have mostly vertical component. And as you adjust your altitude, you don't change your horizontal speed very much. You're mostly affecting your altitude. And as you get past 45 degrees into Matty Stunt's land, every time you make a small change uh, to adjust your altitude, 
you're making yourself go much faster. Your horizontal component of thrust is actually much larger than your vertical component. And this is starting to get to the point of this video, which is that when you're at higher up tilts, it gets much, much harder to maintain your altitude. Every time you want to stop falling, you have just a little bit, you have to go a lot faster. Now let's go back to our example where we were at 55 degrees of tilt and we had a throttle position of 74, a horizontal component of 43, and we we're neither gaining nor losing altitude. What happens now if we do the same 10 degrees? We go from 55 to 65. Again, I'm going to raise the throttle until I reach 30 units of vertical thrust. Oh, I can just barely get there. So I went from 74 to 96 on the throttle, and my horizontal magnitude has gone from 43 to 65. I've gained 22 units of throttle and speed. So when I went from 25 to 35 degrees, I pitched 10 degrees forward, and I only gained 7 units of throttle and speed. But when I went from 55 to 65, I gained 22 units of throttle and speed. And what we're seeing here is that the more up tilt you've got, the more you have to move the throttle in order to manage your altitude. And the, therefore, the more your speed changes. In order to make a small adjustment in, in altitude, you have to make a massive adjustment in your forward speed. And this is one reason why uh, flying with, with up tilt is so difficult. Number one, because you simply cannot slow down. And number two, because if you make very small changes in your pitch or your roll, it, it dis disturbs your vertical thrust vector more and requires larger changes in the throttle. The more up tilt you've got, the more you have to manage the throttle in order to maintain your altitude. You have to make larger throttle movements to maintain your altitude, or to put it another way, smaller changes in pitch and roll disrupt your altitude more. Subjectively speaking, when I'm flying at high up tilt, I find that oftentimes I'll have to catch myself because I'll, I'll roll into a turn and suddenly I'm losing altitude. I didn't move the throttle enough. I'm moving the throttle, just little mo motions of the throttle, as if I was at a less up tilt, but it's not enough. When you're at higher up tilt, you have to swing the throttle more in order to make the thrust vector, the vertical thrust vector, stay constant and maintain your altitude. And if you're not used to that, you will pitch forward to go faster, or more commonly in my experience, you'll roll into a turn, and that will be enough to disrupt your vertical thrust vector, and you'll start to fall. And if you don't catch yourself, you'll just tank into the ground. I can't tell you how many times I've been flying flat out at 60 degrees of up tilt across a front straight, getting ready to go through an air gate, for example, and the copter just sort of tumbles into the ground because I very small changes in pitch make the copter as altitude change dramatically. And here we see the mathematical basis for why that might be. The other thing to take away from this is, and again, this is not revolutionary, but here we've seen the math work it out. As you get to higher up tilts, the copter goes much, much faster. You can see here that just to maintain altitude for this particular copter at, uh, at 65 degrees of up tilt, we need basically 100% throttle. And that means that in order to climb, we got no throttle left for climbing. We can't gain altitude. We can just maintain altitude. The only way to gain altitude here would be to pitch back and reduce our pitch angle, which would direct more of our thrust downward and allow us to climb. But there's no way to climb with 65 degrees of up tilt for this particular copter while keeping the horizon level. It's simply impossible. Well, I hope this video was interesting. Uh, I hope it gave you some insights into why flying with massive up tilt requires much more sophisticated throttle management and much more sensitive attention to your pitch and your roll uh, attitude and how it affects your altitude. Thanks for watching, and as always, happy flying.